Hello, welcome back to the Mobile Motorbike Mechanic Channel. I'm Steve, <coughs> and uh, today we're heading over to uh, Warwick to work on a Suzuki VL125. We need to uh, we need to replace the fork seals and also do a brake caliper rebuild. So we'll see you when we get there. Right folks, so here we are, little Suzuki VL125. Um, so we're just doing the fork seals on this and rebuilding the front brake. As you might have seen, we've got the, uh, got the lights on the van today because we're right on the side of the road. So traffic passing pretty close by. But uh, yeah, this is what we do. So we'll get into it, we'll get this one apart. Okay, so on this one, we're gonna go underneath the, uh, underneath the front yoke there. But because the stand doesn't actually pull the wheel up off the floor, we're just gonna block it up with some wood. And that should just give us enough height. Just give us enough to then allow us to raise the front of the bike up in the air. Right. <laughs> There we go, we're just off. Now, if you notice, on this one, that front wheel, even though it's off the ground, it's still not turning. It's because we've got this seized caliper. So, that's the other job we're doing, is the seized caliper. So, let's get the front wheel removed. Okay, so we'll start with the pinch bolt. And then the front spindle. There we go. Now we need to get that caliper off. I'm just going to undo the pad retaining bolt as well because we want to get that one out because we've got the front pads to change on this caliper as well so this is the caliper we're trying to get off and it is being an absolute night you can see it's just stuck on the wheel but we're trying to rise it off of the disc no. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock it with a little block of wood and a hammer. There it goes. There we go. So yeah, that caliper is absolutely seized. You can see there's no pads left whatsoever in there. There's just nothing left. So we'll be having them all apart sorting him out, fitting new pads as well. Let's try and get this wheel out. There we go. Spindle and spacer. Spacer there. Right, so he's free, but we can't take him out because the guard's in the way. So I'll have to take the guard off. Ratchet spanner, we can get up underneath here and just take these out. Front guard out of it. Tuck it under there for safekeeping. 
Uh, one front wheel out of there. Right. It's 14, I think, on these ones. Yeah, but we want it. Cross those screws out first. Just slacken the indicators off. There we go. Right, and all free to go. Oh, I'll knock. Okay. It's like a six mil. Yep. Just trying to break these caps loose before we remove the forks completely. <laughs> so let's see if this fork lug comes out of here. Doo -doo -doo. There we go. Bum, 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 bum. That's one. And that's number two. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to lie that just there. All right. Let's get the pot of doom out. We'll start undoing these. The one. Let's just see how much oil's going to come out of these. Eee. As usual, got ahead of myself. There should be a washer. There's the washer. And a little spring. You can see the spring. The coils get tighter towards the top. So this is a progressive fork spring. So tightness at the top. And that has got no oil in it at all. So, just need to undo the bottom of the fork leg. I don't know if you heard that little dunk noise, but that's your, your rebound damper falling out the bottom of the fork leg there. So now we can prise that off with a screwdriver. Get rid of the dust seal. Ooh, dust seal gone. And um, we do have the retaining clip in the bottom. So we just need to flick the retaining clip out. Uh, where's the end of it? There it is. Hmm. There you go, one retaining clip gone. 
And then we just need to pop the forks apart. Nice and simple. Now we'll just do a little bit of dentistry. Clean up that retaining clip groove. These aren't too bad at all. A little bit of muck on the groove there. There we go. That's all cleaned up. All good there. We'll get the old seal off there. Is the old seal gone? We can join the old other bits. Fork bushing. So no stupid plastic spacer like Yamaha forks that cause you loads of issues. So that's good. Right. Just give these parts a clean up. So we'll put the fork bushing back on. Put the uh, what that big washer back on. Bloody hell. Um, fork seal, new fork seal. Pop him on. There we go. That's all good. Right. One thing I do need to do is and we'll find a replacement copper washer. Nice new copper washer. So that's the sealing washer between uh, you know, like the bottom of the fork and the bolt that retains it. So where are we? Let's get this lot back together again. Just going to sit the seal in there for the time being. Uh, rebound rod right in there. Now we need the retaining belt. Uh, once again, we're getting covered in schmoo. No rubbish. Right. There we go. Right, so tight to the top, put the washer on, spacer in, cap on, get in there. That'll do it for the minute. Right, let's get this retaining bolt fitted. It's not going to fit. Right, okay. That one in. There it is. Why is he not? Nope, he ain't going. You don't want to go. <laughs> Why don't you want to go in your home? That's got it. There we go. All right. I need to get the fork seal driver and fire that one down. Fuck 
Good. Pop the retaining clip back in. There we go. So he's all nicely retained, all sorted. And then you just need the new dust seal over the top. And there we go. All sorted. So we'll get some fork oil into that one in a moment. We'll just rebuild the other fork leg first. Ah, now this one's got oil in it. So for full disclosure, I did come to do this job a few weeks ago and we had the wrong parts. This is why one of the legs was uh, devoid of oil. Because it wasn't until I got it all apart that I realised the fork seals were incorrect. Let's see about getting this one apart. For anyone who's ever done a gearbox, they'll know what this smells like. It stinks. <laughs> Not seeing any mega problems with these. They're just old age, you know? The stanchions are a bit pitted. So that'll be why they're probably the seals are gone. It's just like I say, just old age. So we'll get everything cleaned up, get everything back together again. The front brake caliper is going to be the one that's going to cause us the problem, I think. They're a bit rusty, but they're still nice and thick. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, with decent thickness, so they're not going to fail at any time. So that's a good sign. So we need to clean that one out. If you can see in there, there's significant rust and what have you in there. You know, he's not restored to perfection, but he's looking a hell of a lot better than he was. So, that's what we're all about, getting it back together again, getting it working.
done. New dust seal on. And that's it. All back together again. Right. So that's both the uh, that's both the forks back together again. So we'll just pop some uh, oil in them, and then we'll get them back on the bike. So what we're going to do this this fork leg here, this bottom yoke is very tight. So I'm just going to get a drift, and we're just going to pop it in there, and so it ever so slightly opens up. So as I put the fork leg in, we're just going to open that up, and it'll help it slide in. Because for some reason this has been exceptionally tight. So it just won't go in. So we just pop that in and open it up. There we go, it's straight in. And we're in. Get the indicator on, and we can push it all the way home. Now these forks, the caps, the tops are completely flush with the top of the top yoke. So as long as we're flush, we're good. So we'll get that all done up now. We won't go mad on it because we're on the stand. And as long as it's nipped up, it ain't gonna pop out. Oh, just before I do that one up, grab the 19 and we'll just just grab the 19 and just make sure that cap's done up. There we go. Right, all done. So indicator's tightened up now, that fork leg's done. Let's get this fork leg in. See if it's gonna cause us any grief putting it in the bottom there. No, straight in. Indicator on. Get it straight up. Till we're flush with the top. Okay, so that's the forks in place. So. We'll get the wheel in, we'll get the, um, get the mud guard done, and then we can start on the brake caliper. Hold on. Right, so the forks are all back together again, front end's on. So we'll start off looking at this brake caliper. So we're just gonna pull what remains of the brake pads out. Luckily the pin did come undone. No, oh, I don't wanna, Jesus, don't wanna play this, don't. Come on. I'm doing it left handed again. There's one. Nope, it ain't going to come apart. There we go. Just needed to constantly turn it and put a bit of pressure on it. So, ooh. as you can see, that's what's left of the brake pads. Nothing, nothing at all. All right. And we can see the piston in there, totally seized, completely seized in there. So we will get a little pot and we'll start putting the parts in. Those pads are not going to be put back in, by the way. 
We've got new pads. Uh, what I want to do, I just want to get a, um, just going to get a G clamp and try and push that piston back just to start moving it. See how easy this is going to move back. In all honesty, I don't think it's going to move back very easily at all. All right. It's now sort of four o'clock on a Friday afternoon and it's getting really busy around here and all. <laughs> a heck of a lot of traffic. Right, there we go. Let's see what happens if we try and move this back. Oh, he does go. Yeah, he does move. That's a good sign. Okay. Right. I'm just going to slacken that um, bleed nipple and slacken the banjo bolt. So we'll just refit the caliper temporarily for two seconds. It just gives us something to persuade against. Right, eight mil. Let's see if this is going to come undone. Is it going to, oh, it is going to come undone. Good. Right, that's good. That's not going to snap. Banjo bolt is the next one. Twelve mil. Oh, I don't want to lose any fluid because I want to use the hydraulics. To push that piston out. So I just want to make sure that we can undo everything before we start messing around with it. And we can, so that's good. Right. So we'll get this caliper off. If we see the piston here, when we pump the brake. That's starting to push that piston out. So what we want to do is we want to use the hydraulic force. And we just want to push until that piston comes all the way out. Now it's almost out. So what I'm going to do, obviously when we pop that out, we're going to get a load of um, brake fluid everywhere. We want to get our drip tray. And what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to Turn the wheel the opposite way so that anything that drips out of here doesn't drip onto the bodywork. Right. It should just, there we go, and there's your fluid coming out. You just leave that to drain for a second. Right, so once that's draining, we're just going to undo the master cylinder. Screws are tight. There we go. Ugh. That's one out. There we go, that's those two out. Get the cap off. See what the diaphragm's like. Yeah, these all. Ooh. There we go. Okay, so there's still some fluid in there. That's to be expected. So because it's starting to rain, I'm just going to balance the cap back on top of there for a second. A little bit of rain probably wouldn't hurt, but a lot of rain in there definitely would hurt because you don't want water in your brake fluid. So I'll just leave that on top of there for the moment and we'll go back down to the bottom. So we're just going to polish this uh, brake piston up. 
Just try and get the worst of the uh, rust off it and the worst of the pitting. We're not going to be replacing this piston. We are going to be replacing all the seals in the caliper. But we're not going to be replacing the piston, so we'll just give it a really good polish and a good clean. Let's see how that's looking now. Oh yeah, that's coming up pretty nice. That's coming up pretty good. The very edge is scored. But that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Because we're not going to be pushing the piston all the way back into the into the bore. So yeah, that's not looking bad at all. Right, set that to one side. Then we can get to work on the caliper itself. Time to get the caliper off. Because we'd previously slackened that banjo bolt. It meant that we could do that. Get that apart now. There we go. Leave him dripping there. There's one copper washer and the other copper washers on the banjo bolt. So we'll get those off and get them replaced as well. Yeah, so that's one copper washer gone. Um, oh, he's jammed in there. There he goes. So we'll bin both of those, replace them. Go over there by the bin. Now we need to get into where these seals are. Oh, <laughs> right. If you have a look, this is the dust seal groove. And there's no dust seal. So there's just a load of crap in there. You see all that? Just all that rubbish in there. There is actually no dust seal in this caliper. So I think somebody at some point in the past has removed the dust seal and not bothered replacing it. So there's the fluid seal. So we'll get him out. We're going to replace him as well. But yeah. So you can see all the uh, all the rubbish in there that we're going to try and dig out, clean up, and that will allow us then to fit the proper seal in place. Okay. Yeah, that's looking a bit cleaner in there now. Just give it a flush through with some parts cleaner. Just hit this with a bit of um, with a bit of parts cleaner, and it's actually completely turned different colour. So we'll carry on giving it a little clean. But the um, yeah, so inside the seal grooves. They're much cleaner now, so we'll get the new seals put in that. But just before we do that, we notice the actual calip the carrier caliper is all rusted up and seized. So we'll get this pin cleaned up. We'll get both of the pins cleaned up and both of the areas inside the caliper cleaned up as well. Because if you notice, it's just it's moving now, but it's it's not very nice. So we'll get all that in, get all that cleaned up, get it all sorted out and then we can lubricate it, put it all back together again with the new parts. So we've taken the slider apart, cleaned it all up. It's looking a lot better now. So we'll just get it lubed up with a bit of lube. So he's all ready to go. Get the, get the appropriate bits in the appropriate places. So we'll just get some uh, lubrication on the old seals. We'll 
We'll get these set into this caliper here. It's normally the dust seal that's the right pane and it flips over, but that has actually gone in pretty well. So, bring the piston back out. Lubricate him up as well. Let's see what happens. He's just going to push back. Nice. There we go. Right. Get the hanger back on. Hmm. No, I don't. That spring's falling out. Hang on. Reset the spring. Right. Hang her back on. And then there we go. Right, so we just need to get the new pads in. No, oh, what am I doing? Upside down. There you go. It's one in. No, I'm still making it wrong. There we go. Doing it wrong. Right, there we go. That's one pad in. Get the other new pad in. There we go. So one rebuilt caliper. I'm just gonna put the uh, put the pin in. Yeah. There we go. Right, to the bike. Finished rebuilding that caliper. New pads in, so we'll get that mounted up. So now all we need to do, get some uh, fresh fluid, bleed through the brakes, and we'll be finished there. And the spanner. Just gonna hoover out the top of this master cylinder because if you have a look in there you see it's absolutely black with sludge and just give them a little hoover out there you go a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer. So now, so now we can just bleed the brakes, fill the master cylinder up with nice fresh brake fluid. And there we go. Top it off. Let's 
to see what that's like. I'm expecting there to be no brake at all because obviously it's got to push the pistons out. There we go, now we're getting a brake. Ah, there's a brake. And we're getting a load of air out of the top here as well, out of the master cylinder. Which is good. There you go, there's a bit more air. Believe it or not, those tiny little bubbles, that is a lot of air. You don't want any air in there at all. There's still more, more tiny little bubbles coming out. Yeah, that's pretty good, that is. So we'll just give it one last bleed through. Get the air out the bottom. Still a little bit more air coming out. Just occasional little bubble of air. So the Suzuki's are a bit notorious for this. But that is that is a good break right there. Because the brakes are on there, and all oh, that is just me squeezing like that. There we go, let's pop the cap on that one. We'll do, let's put a little bit more fluid in just up to the line. Because that's where it should be. Diaphragm's been reset, pushed back in. Get a cloth, because it might spill. Cap on, and screws back in. <laughs> okay, so that's this one all done. Unfortunately, the cloud's broken, so we're getting a bit wet, but we've got the uh, uh, brakes all bled, uh, obviously, front caliper rebuilt and the forks are all done so remember to like comment and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one